How's it going, everyone? Today we're going to talk about attenuators. Now, anybody who has a big tube amp knows what an attenuator is. Not everyone uses them. If you're like me, you actually like to dime a 100 watt amp and just punish everybody who has been nice enough to come see you play. But if you're not, then an attenuator is great or in recording situations. Basically what they're designed to do is give you the full output power of your amp, giving you all that nice power tube saturation at a manageable level. Essentially, you're gonna run out of your amp into the attenuator and then to the speaker. So if you have it, this, you know, this is here say is a 60 watt amp. If you have this thing dimed and you're running into the attenuator, that's gonna soak up any of the extra power that would normally go into your speaker. So, you know, you can run your amp at that full volume, but you can have a nice manageable level and your band members won't be super bummed out. Here's what you're gonna wanna think about. What's the output power of your amp? So all of these are rated, they all have different power ratings. So like this one here is rated at a 50 watt max, same with this one right here. And then this, this big boy here is rated at 100 watt max. As you can see, there's, you know, there's a difference. I mean, you're, you're basically soaking up the excess power that would normally be going to your speaker at full volume. So because of that, you know, you want to make sure you don't exceed the max power rating. I mean, that probably wouldn't go well. The other thing you want to consider is the output impedance of the amplifier. Like I said, this one here is rated at 8 ohms. Now, this one here is an all impedance. So you can basically use this with any impedance and it'll it'll soak it right up. So I showed you the other three. This is the Tube Amp Doctor Silencer. Let me show you the front. This attenuator here is uh, the real fancy one with all the bells and whistles. Uh, but like I said, you always want to check your rating. This one here is set up for an 8 ohm impedance, which would be perfect for this Mesa. And it's got 150 watt max. So we're good to go. Now, Talking about the Mesa real quick, you couldn't really use either of the smaller attenuators that I showed you on this amp because this is pushing out about 60 watts, so you'd be cutting it pretty close because these are rated at 50. You could use the big 100 watt one over here, and then you could, of course, use the silencer because that, this one will be way overrated. We talked about some of the differences between these attenuators, the, at least the ones we carry. Um, in terms of impedance power handling but there are some other differences you know like our simplest one here if you're if you're looking for something real easy to just drop the dbs this one's great it's completely switch based this is this the standard power plug from a recycled sound and it drops it in 6 db increments and you know you get flick one switch you drop 6 db flick the other drops another 6 db this one here is incremental and it, obviously it moves on a switch in increments obviously it's zero being full power and it's the same principle on this one here it's same idea this one you know you're at bypass and you drop it in 2 db increments all the way up until the final one which says negative 10 to negative 30 when you're in this position you're going to move over to here and it goes from negative 10 to negative 30 based on this and then you got your cadillac the tad silencer same idea, but with a few more bells and whistles, you know, you're going to have your uh, 2 dB increment uh, drop, and then you're going to have a couple little tonal switches, uh, tonal variation switches. So basically, it helps you fine tune your tone when you're using the attenuator, because sometimes you get some changes. You know, you got your high-low bite, your high-low punch, and then a little bit more, even more fine tuning of the dB drop. And then the back of this one actually, has you know all all the good stuff you got a fan to keep it cool because like you know this is basically a big heat sink you know it's taking all that power and then you got two outputs for speakers as opposed to the single on these and then you know you got a line out option it, it it's got everything all right so we're here you got the amp you got the attenuator how do i hook it up i'm going to show you right now it's pretty simple now if you were using a head cab situation and not a combo like we are, then you'd want to have two of these nice solid speaker cables. I actually have an extra one sitting over here, but I'm not going to have to use it for this. The reason for that is because we actually have the speaker 
connected to the amp by this cable. You know, it's already included in the combo. If you had a head cab situation, you wouldn't have that. So you would need that second cable. So first thing I'm going to do is disconnect that speaker cable. And then you're going to run from the output of the amp to this labeled input from amp. And you'll have the same thing on any of these. This one says in from amp, you know, it's the same idea. And then you're going to want to run this cable right here to the output to speaker. And that's really it. It's simple as that. Now, like I said, if you had that head cab situation, you'd get this other cable out and you're good to go. But this is all we really had to do here. So now you'll be running into your guitar amp it'll be coming out of your guitar amp into the attenuator and then from the attenuator to your speaker. So you see how that works? You're gonna be good to go with that. So we're back here in the lab to show you folks how an attenuator works in, well, in real time, live. Now, we're just gonna be running our Mesa Boogie pretty darn loud, might not be quite dime, but pretty darn close. And we're gonna run it through the attenuator. We're gonna use this looper pedal to run just a little rock guitar riff through it so that you can hear walking back all the way from minus 16 dB to full power the changes that the attenuator helps you achieve. All right, let's do it. So real quick, you know, we've had some folks think that the attenuator goes between, you know, your guitar and the amp. It doesn't. It goes between the amp and the speaker to cut down on the volume. Now, if you wanted something that would attenuate your signal coming out of the guitar into the amp, we have this great little kit called the Step Ladder. It's one of the mod kits that we do, and it is a passive input attenuator. So that's what this is made for. Now we'll do a video about that at a later date, but there will be a link at the bottom. You can check out and read up on it a little bit. That's if you want to attenuate your signal coming from your guitar. So that's about it. There's not a whole lot to the attenuator. I mean, it does a pretty simple job. You just always want to make sure again, that you have your power rating matched up and it's not exceeding that and that you have your impedances all matched up. That's pretty important. You don't want to damage your amplifier. Other than that, you should be good to go with an attenuator. I mean, you know, you're still diming your amp or say you have it cranked up. I mean, you're still running it pretty hot and hard. So you may burn through tubes a little quicker, something like that. But other than that, you should be good to go. And you can get that nice power tube saturation without the insanely loud volume. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, though you should have. And you can always check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. And again, there'll be links to the nice recycled sound attenuators and this tad one below the video you're watching, as well as our stepladder. All right, thanks a lot.